Um, this is one of those uh, <coughs> messages. I'm going to pray first. God, you woke me up throughout the week. You talked in my ear. And you let me see the examples, both in my life and in the life of people around me. Let me be clear in speaking your words, your intent, your love, and your heart. Let me be clear in surrendering myself, my will, to your power, your authority, your victory. Let us all here today eat of your life and become one in your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. So it's called birthright. So 1 Peter or chapter 1, verse 17 through 23. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. Connection already with the communion message. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of the life handed down to you from our ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defeat. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead, glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth, so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart, for you have been born again, not a perishable seed, but of the imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. We start there. Genesis 25, 29 through 30. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country famished and he said to Jacob, quick, let me have some of the red stew. I'm famished. famished. Jump. Matthew 4, 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I love having Peter be an example because then I don't have to look at myself. I love having Peter out there doing all these things because ah, thank goodness it's not me they're pointing at. But Peter had to go a long way to get to a point where he quit seeking a way to comfort himself. So do we. Peter had to go a long way to figure out a, how to trust Christ just for those few moments when his hunger is so intense that he would do anything to take care of his hunger. Peter wanted to give up his union with Christ, but he said, no, Christ, I will never leave you. I would rather die than not be with you until he was challenged. You're the one. We saw you with Jesus. We know who you are. No, I'm not it. And it wasn't until the rooster crowed that Peter realized that he had eaten food <coughs> other than joining in relationship with Christ. He had joined Esau in selling his birthright. It was Peter who lopped off the ear of a soldier, making it impossible. I've always, it bothers me. It makes it impossible to hear the word of God when somebody, a Christian, knocks off your ear. <laughs> I'm being a good Christian, but now I can't hear the word of Christ. And he was rebuked for that. But Peter felt good in that moment. I'm taking care of my Lord. He went and had stew. He fed his hunger. And so do we, um, body, soul, and spirit, our body, um, going to celebrate recovery. You get to see people's great struggles. You get to hear great struggles and everything else. And there was a man that came and was explaining to one of the other leaders, I'm tr going to try not to use names, explained to one of the other leaders all the things he had gone through. He had gotten arrested, DUI, restraining order, everything that was going on, and how it wasn't his fault. The situations came at him, and they weren't his fault. And he was explaining it and everything else, and I keep looking for an answer, and the only thing that keeps coming back is be still and, and know that I am God. And the leader of the group said, uh, then shut up. Wait, what? I'm not going to feed your flesh. That's not what Christ is here. I'm not here to feed your flesh. I'm not here to make you feel good. I'm not here to agree with you. I'm not here to say that your sympathy, your want, your desire is what I'm going to. 
God did not come here to feed you in that emotional place. He came to feed you with his word. So some of us move through body experiences. We want the emotions to feel good. We want the things, we want that comfort. Some of us move through the soul, soulish experience uh, with rumors and stuff. One of my sisters called and said, hey, did you hear about, no, nope. don't wanna know. Well, you're so mean. <laughs> That's right, I'm not gonna feed it. We keep having these things where we want to throw away our birthright, our Christian lifestyle to get fed. I want you to be jealous with me. I want you to be angry with me. I want you to stop doing stuff. You're so tired, lay down, quit it. I want you to get up and rally with me so that we can stop. I don't wanna be God's. I wanna be Christian. Peter got to a point where he was so frustrated with everything that's going on. He's in the upper room and, and Christ isn't around. He doesn't know where to find Christ and everything else. Let's go in the boat and go fishing and everything else. And, and they go. And Peter's luck, they don't catch a thing. I'm still hungry. I'm still not satisfied and everything else. Throw the net on the other side. You would have thought he would have recognized that voice. So he threw the net on the other side and here they come, enough to sink two boats. I know who that is. The feeding that we can get from God is a whole lot different than the feeding we can get from passing around emotions and rumors and, and gossip and rallying together to feel good. I'd rather have the word of God. And it's causing separations in my life from other people. Well, don't you want to talk about, no. You're so mean, you don't do blah, blah, blah. You're right. I live a different life. I want to have my birthright. I want to be a spiritual being. I want to be the adopted child that, that people talk about. I want to stand at the throne of God and sing worship songs all day long. I want to be in a place where I do not know separation from God ever. And in order to do that, I don't want to be hungry. So how do I do it? Feed on the word. Feed on it every day. So somebody, this is a while ago, somebody said, uh, give me a list of all the things that you do for the church. And I literally had to write down everything I did for the church. And in my not wanting to be egocentric, I cut back on some of the things that I did. Well, my wife asked me, you know what? She, write down everything you do and don't hold back. Just write down everything you do. And so I wrote it down and everything else. And she said, so if we were paying you $12 an hour, shut up. <laughs> and we were taxing you at da, da 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 This is how much you would make a week. Shut up. I don't want to be fed by that. I, that's not what I'm doing. My dad sent a t-shirt. I wish I had, it's in the laundry. I'll wear it next week. It says, uh, it's not about the message. No, it's not about the paycheck. It's about the message. And it's on the back. Um, it's not about getting fed. I, If you don't feel good about serving God, maybe you're asking to be fed the wrong thing. Um, how do we starve each other? That was the other part of it that really struck me this week. Um, there was, I forgot to go to someone's house to help bless their house. Um, I just forgot. And they called me and said, are you going to come over? I'll be right there. I was, I was taking a nap. I was watching hockey. I was doing other stuff. I forgot. But the moment I heard God's voice, go, do. And it was a wonderful thing. We walked around, put peppermint everywhere. I love the smell of peppermint. But we also got to spend time together. We got to share prayer together. We got to share each other's fears, each other's hopes, each, other, each other's desire in the Lord and walk that throughout the house. That's where I want to be. That's the hunger that I want to fill. I don't want to fill the other hunger of there's two hockey games on today and I'm going to have to avoid tonight's service so I can watch the second one. No, I, I've done that before. and It doesn't help me. It really doesn't help me. Um, I want us to not ignore each other. 
I want us to engage in each other. You know how we starve each other? Don't show up. Don't talk to each other. If you want to starve other Christians, don't show up. Don't talk to them. Don't pray with them. If you want to starve the body of Christ, pull yourself away from it. Because we need each and every one of you. Each and every one of you carries a word and a hope and a promise of Christ. And I need that in my life. Um, every so often, I there's, there's somebody that I look forward to seeing, and if I don't get to see them, it hurts. And it's like a, I missed a meal. So my message today is quit feeding yourself through your the body, through your soul, and start feeding yourself through the spirit of Christ that lays within you. It is not by bread that we live. Never has been. It's not the rumors. It's not the gossip. It's not the anger. It's none of that stuff. It's God's word. Get God's word through fellowship. Get God's word through prayer. Get God's word through reading every single morning. Get God's word by sending out text prayers. Get God's word by serving. One of the most amazing parts of Christ's call for each one of us, go out and serve. I can't. I've got a mask on my face. Shh. Yes, you can. You can do it here. You can do it tonight. You can do it at the prayer meeting. You can go to somebody's driveway and let them sit on the porch and have dinner with them. You can do this. But let's start fellowshipping and sharing Christ's meal with one another. I'll close in prayer. Father God, to each and every one of us, you have given a birthright. You have called us your children. You formed us in the womb. You said we are the clay and you're the potter and you have created us and designed us. We are not faulty. But sometimes we look for outside sources to fill our need. Let that in today. Today, let us begin to call upon you to fill every need, want, and desire in our lives. Let us be changed, let us be renewed, and let it all be done to the glory of Christ. Amen. Uh, we'll have prayer time. Do you want pink?